this train is so luxurious. This super train that I'm on, it's, it's the height of luxury. <laughs> welcome. Sorry, sorry. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to another episode of A Dangerous Podcast. I am your host, Ian Alley Seals. I'm here with my fearless co-host compatriots, Jules, Jason, and John. How are you doing, gentlemen, my brothers in arms? I'm, I'm doing really good. Um, I, have a, I have a question for you guys. Please. Before, we, mm-hmm. we get into, before we get into the movie. Um, this is for Ian and Jules. Yes. Um, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to a wedding uh, Friday and you, you guys dressed up. You're, you're really well dressed. You know how to wear a suit. Yeah. Yeah. Jules. Um, do I go with tie and suspenders or just suspenders? No tie. Tie and suspenders. Tie and suspenders. I wear a lot of suspenders. That's yeah. kind of the way I rock. And I'm going to go tie and suspenders. I do that pretty on, pretty on the regular, pretty on the regular. Jewel, I see that you have a you have a a disagreement on this particular. He kind of, he winced a little bit. Yeah, I don't I don't think suspenders are appropriate. Braces may be appropriate under a jacket, but not suspenders. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> we we part ways on. This. I I am I believe. Suspenders on a good-looking man, and I'm a good-looking man. Yeah, as are all the other gentlemen in this chat. Like well, suspenders, suspenders make it, and so I was hoping there would be a consensus. Now I, I don't know what to do. Now suspenders but, uh, are the suspenders are the clip-on ones. Braces are the button-on ones. I'm well, saying listen, button-on we, ones are correct. We all want the braces, okay? <laughs> you know what? We all wish we had that, but we mm-hmm. don't live in a culture. Where you can buy them pants with them buttons on it that can do that anymore. Can you do live in a culture with tailors who can put the buttons on? Oh. I'm just saying. The suspenders look fine, John. They look okay. fine. <laughs> so I, the problem with the tie is they totally fucked up. When I, I ordered the tie from the internet, and you know, and, and it came, you know, it two days before um, the what the wedding because it's Friday, so. I, I really needed it to work. The tie came and check this out. There's no clip on for it. It's like a long like thing. Like you have to like, yeah. like is, yeah. is, is this a real tie or a boat or normal tie no, or a boat tie? It's a real tie, but it's missing the clip part. So you can't like clip it on. You have to um You mean you have to tie a tie? Yeah. Like yeah. a real person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's so, um, a lot. A lot of YouTube videos and <laughs> my future. John, are you telling me right now that you don't know how to tie a tie? You know what's weird is I know how to tie a bow tie. What the? So that is weird. That is weird. What? I know. Yeah, there's not a lot. Of, I learned how to tie a bow tie when I was young, because um, you know that that was my suit growing up. It was a bow tie. So like weddings, wakes, and funerals. Whoa. You know, I had a bow tie, so my I learned how to do a bow tie. But no, never, never a tie. Whenever I had a tie, even ever, I, I've always had either a clip on or like, you know, now they have like the zip ties, which like, you know, it's like a zip. John, this is insane. I know. <laughs> this, this is more insane than anything on Super Train. Yeah. <laughs> anything that we want. The idea that, John, you know how to tie a bow tie. No one knows how to do that. I know. No yep. one knows how to do that. But you've been having clip-on ties since 1978. So, and it's really my dad's fault. And he, and it, that kind of goes to his thing. He was just like, he was just like, you know, everybody, every every man knows how to do a tie, but nobody knows how to do a bow tie. So I'm going to teach you how to do a bow tie. And he just always forgot to, yeah, you know, never John, got around to teach me to do a tie. Dad is right, and that's an amazing skill that you learn. Sure, yeah, but yeah. he. He should have taught you how to tie a normal tie, though. But this must have obviously this is obviously a conspiracy, so that you would just wear a bow tie for the rest of your life, so that you would be you'd be a bow tie guy. And let me tell you, I I rock a motherfucking bow tie. I'll tell you that. And why aren't you wearing the bow tie to this wedding? That's the Um, real question. Why don't you wear a collared shirt and a bow tie every podcast episode? Yeah, what the fuck, dude? (laughs) Opus Opus took that. Opus has the. you know, walk around with a daily with a bow tie. I can't do that. I can't well, take any that. Well, award winner Opus Moreski isn't in this podcast, and you are, and where's <laughs> the bow tie? 
<laughs> I don't right. want to assume he. he's got power. He's got connection to some powerful players. I don't. I don't want to get a letter. It's true. <laughs> but John, here's the thing. Next podcast, mm -hmm. I'm going to teach you how to tie. That's. It's not going to help you for the wedding. No. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. going to teach you how to tie a, a normal tie. Okay. Can you like teach an Oxford? Us? An Oxford yeah. tie. Well, well, Jules, we do the Shelby, right? Yes. Yes, Jules and I both do the Shelby. I don't like the the the, the Oxford is the bulky. No, yeah. no I don't we like do the, we do the Shelby. Jules and I can both walk you through this, but you got to right. teach us how to do a bow tie. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Totally Everybody, fair. Yeah. welcome to the Dangerous Podcast, where <laughs> we teach you the basics of uh, of male dress. Thank you, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to another episode where we discuss cummerbunds uh, versus vests. I'm a vest man and uh, always will Welcome be. to an episode of a dangerous fashion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I got to tell you guys, I'm in a good mood tonight. I'm in a pretty damn good mood. You want to know why? Because I fucking loved Super Train. <laughs> I had a feeling you would. I, I knew you no, no, no. Don't come to me. Don't don't talk to me about this because I know for I in my bone marrow that the man who chose this loves it too. Thank you. That's right. Yes, thank you. That's right. Yeah. I do love Slipper Train because it is it's a masterpiece. It is elevated. It is, you know, Dan Curtis is a auteur. In this in this case, okay. <laughs> in comparison to the Love Boat, oh my God, that's it's my so qualification. It's so much better than Love Boat. Oh my God, I mean, it, it, you talk about like exceeding the the like you know the source material here. I mean, so good yeah. lord. I, I don't know there, anything about this. I don't remember Love Boat. Like I only have vague memories of it. Was there it's because murder, literally was there murder and Love Boat was who? Was there I don't a murder think, in Love Boat? I don't think there was ever a murder in Love Boat. Nothing I mean, ever <laughs> happened in the Love Boat, and that's why it was a shitty show. <laughs> and we just saw a super train, and Jesus Christ, did a lot of things happen. Was <laughs> okay. this made by the same guy The same guy who did Love Boat? No. no. Not at all. No. No, You're no. This better. Is, yes. Okay. You're so, just... Okay. All right, all right, backstory. You just backstory. get... You just... You're like me. When you watch this, you just kind of get hit over the head with... The with music what? and... <laughs> yeah, like, no, so first of all, I got a back. There's a little backstory that everyone should know here. So, Jules and I, and our respective spouses, generally every Monday before pandemic, and we, we, we just started up again, we watched Dark Shadows. Dark Shadows, which many people know, was a daytime soap It was daytime, right? It was a daytime, mm -hmm. it was a daytime yeah. soap opera horror series gothic horror series about a vampire in like the in 1960s new england uh it is widely known as being terrible because it is i'm not denigrating the people who worked on it i'm simply saying they rushed it every but it week. was on it was on for a million years a though. million yeah. years and <clears throat> years. it, it was it went from black and white to color and so yeah and Jules and I and our families, we watch about two to three episodes a week. And we're never going to get through it in our lifetime. Like, it's never going to happen. But at the end of every episode of Dark Shadows, <coughs> uh, what is said, Jules? What is, what is the voiceover at the end of the credits? Dark Shadows is a Dan Curtis production. It is a Dan Curtis production. And I did not know this, and I think you didn't either, Jules. I did not know. That Super Train <laughs> is a fucking Dan Curtis production. Super, Super Train is also a Dan Curtis it production. It is a Dan Curtis production. Mm -hmm. And Jules, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, I keep watching, like, how did Dan Curtis make this? <laughs> a lot of It Dan was because he literally made 700,000 episodes of dark shadows with absolutely no money and sets that were wobbling in the wind, okay? And then he's just, <laughs> he somehow falls out of his ass this, you know, gigantic full-size, quadruple-size train, you know? Like, <laughs> it was, it, <laughs> it's completely insane. So, like, as we've said on a Dangerous Podcast many times, it being terrible and we hate it is not a prerequisite. Now, this is not a podcast where we bring, it does help. 
where we just bring the things we love, that's not what we do. Our criteria is that it is forgotten and often best left forgotten. I don't know if this counts as best left forgotten, but it is most certainly forgotten by most of the world. <clears throat> but Jules. This is the case, ne never Jules. Now this is the case, yeah. I know that both Jules and I loved what we just watched. I, at, as we move on, I'm gonna wanna know about you gentlemen. Now, I'm gonna try to be on a roll two weeks in a row by mm -hmm. making a recap as short as possible. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. Are we ready to do this? By the way, I'm sorry, everybody. How's your week? We haven't we haven't gotten to know each other. We haven't had our preamble, which we're never good at anyway, and everyone is angry that we do it because we don't <laughs> this at all. But, I'm not here to talk about my personal life. I'm here to talk about super training. Jason, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm uh let's just say I'm hanging in there and keeping up. Cool. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. John, how about you, buddy? I'm doing good. I'm staying out of the, uh, the homeless shelter, um, despite Jason's best efforts with um, <laughs> forcing me to spend all my money on cryptocurrency <clears throat> right That's before, true. like, the big crypto crash. That's <laughs> right. Of, like, <laughs> 21, <laughs> the Black yeah. Friday of cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. Hey, Every here, why don't you buy some? Uh, everybody who I'm is kidding. It's totally my fault. But uh, everybody totally is if you're at home listening on some sort of mobile device right now, uh, and you can't see that there is a there's a whirling ceiling fan above John, that's in his uh, thirty dollar a night Berlin Turnpike motel that he currently that's lives what, in. That's what I'm gonna be hanging from one of these days. Yeah. <laughs> hey, aren't you in that hotel with that woman with the thing from the stolen mile? No. <laughs> Not no, I got a, I got a um, yeah no, they, I've got a court order to. I think we all have court orders not to. Step on that <laughs> yeah, that's right. We can't, we can't go back there. <laughs> uh, for those of you just tuning in, all of us are, have been working on a short film. It's an action adventure uh, race car comedy mm -hmm. called the Stolen Mile that we've been working on since 1986. Uh, it's not true, but we've been working on it for more than a few years. Uh, and uh, it's shot almost entirely on the Berlin Turnpike. And at one point, we were chased away from a, a, a prostitute motel that we were shooting outside of. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's where John. You don't know for sure there's prostitutes, but you can just look at it and know. <laughs> I mean, there wasn't a sign saying prostitute motel, but you but, pretty, yeah. you know, it's a pretty it, fair bet. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, in Stolen Mile news, uh, Jules and I uh, bit the bullet last night and did a composite. Now, I mean, for those of you who will see this movie, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a spoiler alert. If, you're, if you see someone inside a car driving, they're not driving a car. That's all just green screened. And our, our goal is that when you're watching it, you have no idea. Now, this is an ambitious goal because if you watched any television or movies from like 1942 to 1982, no one ever made that look good. No one ever made green screen car driving look good, but apparently we think we can do it. That's like, right. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna do what, mm -hmm. like, what like Bullet couldn't do. We're gonna, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But we got a lot uh, of tricks up our sleeve, so you we know. do, we do. You know? so, so we did that last night, Jules. How'd it go? It went very good. So what I was really excited about was such a crisp definition of everybody's face along that green screen. It was beautiful. And then their hairs were perfectly keyed out, perfectly not clipped out, not disappearing. You know, sometimes people in front of green screens and little hair goes wild and then it just disappears. No, no, none of that. It was beautiful. So. Yeah, it was really, really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I am impressed, Jules. You're but this is just going to make John more excited about doing more green screen work. We're <laughs> perfecting it. I mean, if you're getting this good at it, I don't want to hear we can't, you know, make a green screen movie, Mr. Wizard. It's true. It's true. Uh, all right. Have we bored everybody with our uh, our inane chatter and yep. self indulgent movie talk? Yeah, I think enough people right tuned out the podcast by now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's where we look. like, especially all of our Toronto viewers. They're gone now. Mm -hmm. They're not interested. But maybe we can get them back if we talk about the most luxurious, the most decadent, the most advanced train that's ever been created. 
that would be Snowpiercer. <laughs> but actually, I, like, but when before I, was young, Snowpiercer. I was like, man, this prequel to Snowpiercer is wild. <laughs> <laughs> it really, I mean, you've got to think of it, it really is the prequel to Snowpiercer. Yeah, like, it's like they have a little bit more freedom on the train. Yeah, but now <laughs> they have a little more freedom now. Yeah, right. Except for that one lady who that married lady guy, she doesn't, not her. Yeah. But everyone else, everyone else does. All right. So now the film opens in the I episode. Like, you mean. I, I, I'm sorry, the, the, the pilot of this television show opens in. I feel like we've seen this scene like three or four times in the movies we've watched, you know, like this industrialist meeting. Like we saw this scene in Rollerball. I feel like we've seen it in a few, but it's like this this ornate room and it's filled with industrialists and CEOs. And there's this wizened man who's obviously a multi-billionaire who says, and my plan is to build the most sophisticated atom powered train ever built. It will travel across the country from New York to LA in 36 hours. And it will be, and it will, it will drag the most sophisticated, luxurious coaches that have ever been designed in can all I, of oil travel. Can and, I just stop? Yes. Can I just stop you right there? In like, let's. When when did this come out? Nineteen seventy what? Seventy eight. Nine. Okay. Seventy nine. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you were watching this in nineteen seventy nine, and somebody said, "In the year twenty twenty one." We're not even close to that. <laughs> We're not even close to that. We can't even make cars electric, barely. Mm. Just barely. Mm. <laughs> I mean, we're like making these hybrid kinds. They're kind of electric, but you know. Yeah, That's yeah. why myself and other transportation advocates are have made very strong insistence that Biden include a super train in his infrastructure plan. <laughs> well, I think we should Tom just skip. Time. I think we need yeah. to skip super train and just go right to jetpacks. <clears throat> Dude, we have jetpacks. Jetpacks exist in jetpacks. <laughs> super train is going to not like <laughs> they're supposed yeah. to, in the year 2021. We're supposed to every every there should be nothing but jetpacks. Should be nothing. Anyways, but go ahead. So now I'm going over this one scene in detail because I, I really love it. So the other CEOs in the room are like, what was his name? Mr. Rust? What was his name? The uh, I don't remember. Root? Root? Root. Root. Yeah, Root. 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 Someone Root. goes, Root, your, your love of locomotives and rail travel has made <laughs> you insane. <laughs> the, your, this affectation will, this gamble will ruin our company. And then Root turns to him and says, well, considering that the amount of years I have left in life, I can't count. Uh, I can't. Uh, I can't. What does he say? Like I can count on this one hand. It's not so much of a gamble for me. <laughs> it's funny that those CEOs mentioned that Super Train would be a big gamble for their business because this show Super Train was a big gamble. For <laughs> can we can we stop for a second and just? tell everybody what super train is super train is a nuclear powered bullet train yeah. yeah and it's equipped with amenities like you would find on a cruise ship yeah it's, swimming yeah. pools shopping centers mm -hmm. a gym disco but it's like twice disco as, tech it's twice as wide and twice as tall as like a normal train too. yeah it's like right. yeah Broad it's a pretty train. big train it's pretty big um, remember it's, it's top but, speed anybody 190 miles per hour. That's the cruise speed. The, but no, Top that was it. 250 mm -hmm. miles per hour. Yeah. But you were right. 36 hours to from New York to LA. Uh, it's a pretty fast train. It's pretty fast. But anyway, and so then he goes, and now behold, Super Train! And he pulls off a curtain and he shows an artist rendering of Super Train. Can I can I just jump in and give a, a, a quick um, fact? Yes. So if it did take 36 hours, somebody figured this out. I'm reading it here. So if it did take 36 <laughs> hours to go from New York to LA, that would put the train's average speed at 80 miles an hour, which is slower than Amtrak's <laughs> <Acela Express. laughs> at all those speeds of bullet trains. 
anywhere <laughs> found anywhere in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but does the Acela have a disco? <laughs> <laughs> so okay, all right, all right. Now I want to bring up this scene because I want to note that. We're just kind of lucky that his plan is the super train. Like he's this big CEO in that statement of like, I'm not going to live more than five years. So this isn't a gamble to me. Like anything else he said would have worked with that statement. He could have been like, we're investing in tomato power for an our tomato factories. And, or he could have said like, I think the, the new wave of the future is underwear wearing outside of your clothes. And everyone said, your affectation with outside <laughs> underwear is going to ruin this company. It's a gamble. Well, it's not a gamble for me because I'm going to be dead <laughs> soon. <laughs> like, we're, I mean, they're kind of lucky that his idea was super train and not something else utterly preposterous. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, then we get, we cut to super train and we have a walk through with super train. Like, I want to say the Mater D. He's not the Mater D's, but he's like the the... The head of activities on Super Train. He's walking through and he meets a bunch of people, many of whom we will not see throughout this pilot. Like, there's the hairdresser who's being wacky and he goes through the gym and he sees people working out and he goes by the pool and he goes by the chef and he does this and then and he and he does an inspection of all the hot ladies that work on Super Train. And uh, and then we're ready to go. All right, here's the crux of the Super Train plot. And I need your guys' help here because there are elements of this that I do not understand. All right. There so is confused. a man named Mike Post. Mike Post owes a lot of money to the mob due to gambling. Or maybe not the mob, to like a loan shark. It's the mob. I don't know. He owes Big Ed a lot of money. And he has asked his boss, Miss, I don't know her name, his boss to give him a loan. All right, everybody's with me right now? I'm with you. Mike Post owes money to a loan shark, and his boss is going to give him a loan. Now, what is the fucking deal with his boss? What is So he's he works for this beautiful woman who is, what is her job? Is she an <laughs> agent? What does she do? What is her business? It all has to do with Hollywood somehow. I'm totally confused too because there's like actors and stuff. I couldn't tell who was like an actor and who was like a producer or a director or what was going on. Yeah, I could not like, figure it out at all. There's some guy named Rick and his wife. Does anyone remember his wife? What her name was? Like Kate or something like that? And his wife? No. I mean, I'm going to say Kate. His wife, Kate. And Mike's job is to be like a handler, okay? Is to like keep Rick in line. That's his job because his boss has to make a deal. Is the deal with Rick or is it with Rick's wife, Kate? Like, does anyone know this? No, nobody's got any idea. So, uh, I'm glad we're all on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm willing to criticize this. And I love Super Train, but like this, they never make this clear. And so his job is to keep. Uh, but the most we can say is his job is to keep Rick from causing trouble. All right. Does everyone agree with me on this fact? Yeah. yeah. Rick, is, yeah. Rick is kind of a hellraiser, and want to keep him keep him out of trouble. All right. That's going on. Also, someone is trying to kill Mike. But All he right? doesn't know who. Or why? Well, first he thinks he knows why because he owes money yeah. to get. He was and like Jerry Seinfeld. Who are these people? The only other main characters of consequence are this lunkhead. Who the, the lunkhead? What was his name? What, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't the, the, the Javier Bardem character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. I know. I thought the same thing. <laughs> yeah. The big guy. Could somebody please bring up the IMDb for Super Train so we can get these names? I'm sorry. I normally have this stuff up and ready. Um, but there's this guy. We'll, we'll call him. We'll call him Frank. It's not Frank, but like we'll call him Frank. And who is this really scary, imposing guy? And he wears suspenders with clips mm -hmm. <laughs> for most of the thing. That's how you can tell he's a bad news. 
Yeah. Oh. Now, um, and then there's his wife, who I keep. Oh, Jack. Running. It's Jack. 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 Thank you. And who's his wife? It's not Trixie, though. She's really a Trixie. Doesn't she seem like a Trixie? Yeah, she may as well be. But what is <laughs> what, was, what was her name? Our, her name is um. Uh, I forgot. I literally opened the IMDb page, DB page when I was Barbara? watching it and got, got, got confused. It's not Barbara. It's anyway, confusing because there's so many people in there. I'm gonna call her Trixie until you guys tell me not to. And mm -hmm. so Trixie is she's bubbly. She's bubbly. She's the, the, it, can Lucy? we say Lucy was her name Lucy? I think it might have been Lucy. Let's just go with Lucy. No, I'm going with Trixie until I'm correct. Trixie's good. Trixie's Trixie. good. Trixie is bubbly. That is her. She's vivacious and she's bubbly. She's kind of dim-witted. She's women. I'll tell you what, and I don't mean to get into the whole thing, but women are like portrayed really awful in this. <laughs> <laughs> really yeah. Awful. yeah. So, uh, but Trixie is, you know, she's there with Jack, and Jack is just terrible. He's like the worst. He's just screaming at her all the time. I will say, like, I was scared of Jack in this. Can, can, can I give you a? Um, can I give you a? a, a a uh, fact about the guy who played um, Jack. His name is yeah. Don Stroud. Okay. Okay. He played a James Bond villain. Who did he play? He was the villain in License to Kill. Oh. Really? Yeah. First of all, I'm, I mean, he's very imposing. He's a giant guy, and it, he's scary. And and he was scary. Like he's like, and Trixie would just kind of come in and be like. Jack, you won't believe it about Super Train. They got a disco and there's a pool and there's a and there's a barber shop and there's an ice cream shop and he's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's like, whoa. <laughs> and, and and she and she it just kind of rolls off Trixie and she's like, yeah. And then we can get room service. Then we can go to dinner. And he's like, you no, no fun allowed. You stay in this room. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, well, you know what, Jack? I'm just gonna go. Uh, I'm just gonna go explore the train by myself. And he's like, good. And take a long time coming back. He's just the worst. He's scary. So Trixie is walking around the train. She bumps into Mike Post a few times. Uh, they they decide they're friends. Mike, there we start it with somebody. We see somebody leave a briefcase with a bomb in Mike's cabin. Uh, he then finds it. He's like, oh no, he doesn't look in. He doesn't see this bomb. He's like, I don't know. Uh, uh, whose briefcase that is, he gives it to a porter. They're looking at it at the edge of the train. This is where I have to have a a brief questioning of the design of Super Train. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of parts of Super Train where you can be on the outside and there are railings. That seems like a death trap. <laughs> hmm. I, I mean, you know, if the transportation authorities found that that was within regulation and super trains allowed to run with an outside deck, then, you know, they know best. This is 1978 or 79, dude. There were no regulations on super trains. <laughs> uh, so, but, and this is how we know it's, it, it, it's bad news because Trixie bumps into them and the suitcase falls. And then they're, they're driving by and Trixie's looking backwards and she sees it explode. Uh, Ever no, not too many pay, people pay it mine. No, no, no. Mike, Mike Post pays it mine because he's like, oh man, somebody's trying to kill me. And now we set off the the a plot of the show, which is people keep trying to kill Mike. Now he's hanging around with his good buddy Rick. Rick is important to his boss's plans. We don't know why, uh, but and Rick's a nice guy. He's kind of like, what is he? He's like Texan or something. What is his? Yeah, accent? he's Texan. Okay. Yeah. And like they're in the sauna, and then the assassin like removes the door handles and cranks the sauna up to like 500 degrees. Um, I believe uh, Sharon just asked where their deck chairs. I'm gonna go and gamble and say there were deck chairs on Super Train. <laughs> I, I would I would gamble some of Mike Post's money and say that uh, there were deck chairs. Can I can I can I give in another uh, Jack fact? Yeah, yeah, please. I'm ready for another Jack fact? Jack. Fack. <laughs> Um, he was in um, uh, uh, Quentin Tarantino's Django Unchained. You want to guess who he played? Hold on. Well, I mean, he wasn't Django and he wasn't uh, 
he wasn't the German guy, so he was racist. Um, he was a slave owner or manager. Who was he? Sheriff Bill Sharp. Oh my God, the dude that gets shot <laughs> in the street. That's Jack. He's a bad oh. guy in everything he does. Yeah. Damn. Wow. He plays, wow. He plays an asshole really well. For sure. Yeah, especially on Super Train. So, uh, yeah, and you know, they're and so they try to get cooked alive in the sauna. They get kind of rescued. Uh, the the head of Super Train, like I don't even know what their jobs are, but like the main boss of Super Train is trying to keep this hush hush because he doesn't want Mr. Russ to find out that I don't know there's been accidents on Super Train. Uh, and then we keep going with that. Like then you're gonna get this buddy buddy team with Trixie and Mike and Rick, and there's this super super skeezy guy walking around Super Train. He's like he well, let's be clear he looks Italian, all right. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's all Italian, um, and I, you know, I'm I'm partially Sicilian. Uh, right. That doesn't make that comment any any less racist, but uh, I said it anyway. But yeah, like we get that. Like Italian isn't a race. You're you're okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> but but, th but this is this. They're making a race. They're making a ethnic stereotype here. And the and so everyone who sees him, they were like, doing a lot of bad things. <laughs> this is very seventies. This is like, man, it, it reminds me of my childhood, and it's just being like, holy shit, did I used to live in that world? Oh my god! I have Shut to up say, and go to bed, I, have, I have to say that there's a lot of this that actually strikes me as even more old fashioned than 1979. Yeah, sure. I feel like this I feels like right. a this feels kind of like an early '60s show. Really, yeah. you know, you know, in terms really of like yeah. the sensibilities, in terms of the rest of it, it does, it's like nothing's happened since the sixties. There's like no. I was surprised you know. it was so so late in the seventies. I I would have yeah. guessed like seventy three or yeah no, yeah. yeah. It, I, I mean, even if I mean it wasn't sixties, it, it is certainly a nineteen seventies vibe. Like there is this one scene where Mike Post is kind of walking down the corridors of the train, and it's just a party. And I'm gonna note this is where Super Train is all fantasy and I'm, I'm i'm sorry like i know it's about a super train but like the biggest bit of fantasy for me was there what mike's walking down the hallway and it is this giant party like just people are having fun in the hallway and then there's music playing <laughs> and everything like that and this gorgeous buxom blonde like turns to mike and goes hey come on in here and have a drink with me and he's like oh, sorry i gotta go and rotate my tires and she's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> now we got a note right now that like Mike, he's not the best looking guy in the world. And like, just this is like, this is a dream. Like this guy is walking down the hallways, beautiful women propositioning him for sex. Like if anyone's ever been on a real cruise, <laughs> it's all old people doing nothing. <laughs> it, is not, it is not this. It is, and this was the most, that was the most fantasy element for me, of Super Train, that you would be you never, on. You never, you never see that on the commercials for cruises. No, no. So, all right, all right. All right that I digress. I digress. Um, but and yeah. So now you have this buddy trio of Rick, Mike, and Trixie, and they spot the ethnic stereotype of this guy's wearing a black suit, uh, white silk tie, greased back black hair, and he's got dark shades on. Uh, so they then. He's also them. following Mike Post around all the time. All the time, all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they make a pit stop somewhere that looks like a political rally. I don't even yeah. know what the hell that was, but it's like, was it a was it a party for Super Train? What Jules? What right guys? What yes. was this? Yeah, there was. Yeah, it was a big. The, 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 they said something about the politician who I guess got. Super Train approved or something was there. There were also random Native Americans were there. Um, I don't really understand what was going on. No, I, I, I don't they get put a, they put a the giant Random head. Native Americans were there. They yeah, were, yeah. They put, like, a really offensive Native American headdress on Mr. Wu. Oh, I, I just got to mention how, how beautiful that, 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 that shot of it, of Super Train pulling into the station was. That was just, it looked that really was good. beautiful. And they did that by putting the model of the Super Train closer to the camera 
and having a real train station in the background. And for a minute, I was like, did they build a real super train? <laughs> how, how did they do the scene when they were boarding super train and there was like a giant train there? Like, how did they do that? Well, that was built. That was built. Yeah, those are just flats. Yeah. Like, yeah. That was built. But wh where I was like, I'm like, there's no way it's going to move. There's no way they're going to make it move. And at first I thought I was wrong when it started pulling out of the station. But then I realized that all they were doing was that they put the people on the platform on a platform that moved. Oh. And then, and then the, so that the, the super train would be going by. So they have a camera and the, and the, and the people on the platform saying goodbye to super train. And then it looks like the super train is, is going by. But it's, it was just one huge thing. But anyways, enough technical notes on the mastery of super train. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So now then they so they lure ethnic stereotype uh off the train and then Trixie tricks him into falling into a chest. Like there's this big <laughs> That's ridiculous the weirdest <laughs> fucking thing in the whole film. Sure show. Like there's this big, like, you know, eight foot by eight foot chest. And she calls him over and says, can you help me open this? There's a costume in this I want to wear. Didn't she say in the costume that she, she wants to be an Indian princess? Just more. Yeah. Like yeah. That's appropriation comment. So ethnic stereotype opens it up. And then Mike and Rick push him in and they close it. And they're like, we got him. And then they jump on Super Train and Super Train leaves. Uh, then the chest opens up and he gets out he's like oh my god where'd super train go i'm a salesman i have to get to my expo in la that has all my supplies stuff oh okay he wasn't an assassin he was a salesman see look how progressive the message is it's don't be racist to italian that's, there you that's, go. That, there you that's go. the lesson of super train yeah <laughs> um and so then as we go on the romance between mike and trixie deepens uh mike uh Trixie goes back to Jack, who is always terrible, and then he mercil mercilessly beats her. It's really horrible. It is really scary. Like, no joke. Like, she walks in, and he just beats the crap out of her, and it's horrible. Also, we cut back to the plot of, I, I don't know, Mike is supposed to be watching Rick, and Rick, he, he punches somebody, like the producer, Punch is George Hamilton, who's also in this, who we haven't mentioned, but George yeah, Hamilton is right. in this. George because of course he would be. Of course he I would mean, be. Well, you know, I, I don't... was looking for George Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need IMDb to know that he's in No, I just <laughs> saw the opening. I'm like, where's George Hamilton? He's in there somewhere. Yeah, and then, but Rick punches him because he's jealous of his wife? Or yeah, his wife is like hang, was hanging around with George Hamilton a lot or something. Okay. And that really wasn't well established. We would all punch George Hamilton if they were yeah. hanging around our place. And then somebody <laughs> tries to stab Mike Post, but stabs another one of the Hollywood people. Right. Who dies. Um, then Mike's boss gets mad at him. Like, I can't believe, like, I can't believe that Rick punched. George Hamilton. I can't believe that he did that. Blah blah blah. He's like, somebody just died, lady. Someone was just murdered. <laughs> like, oh, whatever. And, and I have to say that everybody on Super Train and working for Super Train and the rest of it are very blasé about a guy just being stabbed in the yeah, disco on is, Super Train. It deal. was not a big deal. It was just kind of like, oh, what are you gonna do with Super Train? <laughs> well, yeah, and, like to the point of. At one point, Trixie opens the door to her cabin and a porter goes by and he's like, the porter's like, yeah, that murder was crazy. She's like, what? Oh, yeah, a guy got stabbed. Over okay. <laughs> anyway, have a good night. Like, that the murder was crazy. Was I have to say, what's so weird about what's weird about the crew is that they start the maiden voyage of Super Train acting like they've been working there for 20 years. <laughs> I've seen it all and can't be asked to do their job. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely bizarre. It's literally the first night, and they're all like, oh, we're taking off. Time to have a drink. Time to hit on the <laughs> owner's granddaughter. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, what yeah. the hell oh, we'll is going we'll on here? That. We'll, we'll yeah. get to that. And so, uh, yeah, so Mike is fired, and then, and then they finally do take it seriously, and they get a police detective on board. 
And this is where uh, Jules told me on the phone, an hour in, you're going to lose your shit. And I did. Because that police detective is played by the actor who played vampire familiar Willie in Dark Shadows. If you, I mean, if you have about Dark Shadows, you don't need to. Don't do it. But if you do, <laughs> the best character is Willie, and he's in the train. And I love it. I, I'm still going to say Buzz is the best character. Buzz is really good. Buzz is really good. Willie stands the test of time, and he's also in Super That's true. Um, and this is when the plot gets, I don't know. I don't know. Like, If the Fonz was there, he'd be jumping a shark. There are a lot of sharks <laughs> jumping right here. So, so the detective Willie calls like the FBI. No, he is the FBI. He is oh, the who's FBI. the FBI? Who does he call? Like, Treasury? The, the Treasury Department, yeah. Why does he call the Treasury Department? He calls the Treasury Department, all right? And they find out that Mike Post is an alias. That, like, Mike Post is in the Witness Protection Program. And he used to be a mobster. Okay, everybody got that? Everybody got that. I got it. So whoever's killing, trying to kill him must be from the mob, all right? So Detective Willie confronts Mike, and he's like, all right, Mike, what's, what's, I see, I'm trying to do a Willie impression, I can't right now. <laughs> Tell me, look, uh, what's going on with you? I'm not in the mob, I don't know. He's like, oh, whatever, Mike, we're going to get you off the train for your own protection, for your own protection. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, okay, that's fine. So Mike goes to Trixie, and he's like, Trixie, I love you. To get me off the train. Come with me. And this is where, oh God, the era, it's rough. He looks at Trixie, who's got a black eye. He goes, Jack slapped you around a little, didn't he? She's like, yeah. He's like, hmm, yeah. She's kind of lets, that doesn't let it go. <laughs> but he's like, yeah, that's not a but good But it's like, thing. you know, it's totally, ah, those things happen. Yeah. And he's not happy about it. I mean, it's he's the like, 70s, you know, these things are going to happen, like, Trixie. As if uh, this is, I think, the, the level that you can that you can put to it is that he sees that her boyfriend has literally beat her up and it's like his response is oh, you shouldn't be treated like that honey like that's his response i don't know is that of the time i don't know i hope not but anyway that's what but he says trixie you should leave jack and come with me and she's like Okay, so she goes, to, but she's like, I got to talk to Jack first. And he's like, all right, well, I'll call you when it's time. So she well, goes. Why would he let her do that? <laughs> oh, the guy who beat you? Yeah, go have a private conversation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, before, before you leave. So she goes to Jack and she says, I'm going to leave you. And he's like, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then she's like, I'm going with Mike Post. He's like, what do you mean? Mike Post is dead. She's like, no, he's not. He's outside. He's like, oh, hmm. Trixie, I love you. When your brother died, I told him I'd take care of you and you were going to stay with me. I think I've taken care of you pretty well. I love you, Trixie. Don't leave me, baby. Don't leave me. And she's like, oh, Jack, I do love you. So, guys, I'm a little fuzzy what happens at this point. <laughs> Mike, Mike comes in to get Trixie and she's like, no, I've got to stay with Jack. Does Jack beat him up? What happens right here? Jack shove him out of there or something? I don't know. No, anyway, I think he just leaves. He just leaves. Just leaves. Defeated. And he goes down to the cargo department, and there his assassin reveals himself, who is a baseball player for one and with the entourage of the Hollywood people. If this mm -hmm. doesn't make sense to you, we've seen it, and it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> uh, and he's like, well, Mike, I'm the assassin, and I'm going to kill you. He's like, why are you going to kill me? I don't know, man. I like you, but I got to kill you now. So it goes. Uh, and so. And he, he killed Detective Willie. Detective Willie is oh, dead. He and then the, he, Willie? Yeah, he was in the, he was in the, the oh, baggage, I baggage thought, part. I dead. thought the guy in the baggage claim was the guy who got stabbed. No, that was Detective Willie. A lot of people died on Super Train. Which was too bad because I thought that maybe in the rest of Super Train, it would be a reoccurring Detective Willie, you know, yeah, he could coming have been, on, solving he could crimes. Have been, yeah, he could have been the train detective. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, so they open the door on Super Train, and uh, they throw Detective Willie out, 
and he is about to kill Mike, and then Mike jumps out and climbs the back of Super Train in a pretty harrowing scene. Uh, then the assassin, does he purposely shoot Jack? Like, how does that happen? He shoots and kills Jack. That happens. Now, oh, yeah, why, yeah, yeah. Why does Super Train go off the rails at this point? <laughs> this was my understanding, but I'm confused. A wild hillbilly breaks into the engineering section and starts going for bear, just like races Super Train really hard. Mm -hmm. Is that what happened? No, that's the driver. Yeah. The driver, the driver had just been rambling about how he thought Super Train could go faster. So he took this opportunity to you make it go 81 go miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just assumed that they would have had a competent engineer driving the train. You not are wrong. Rent. I'm going to push this baby to 97. Mm -hmm. All right. So now everything is going fuck all nuts on Super Train. It's all Poseidon Adventure all the time now. Like people are falling. There's like <laughs> flying. People yeah. are falling all around. Mike's on the outside of the train. He goes flying. He crashes through a window. They, they were like, stop Super Train, please. And they stop Super Train. And uh, then Mr. Russ turns to like the head of Super Train and goes, I thought we were told that window was indestructible. All right. Here's how Super Train ends, everybody. Everybody's happy. Like everybody's walking out. Um, like Mike is fired, but then Jack and his wife they they fired Mike's boss. There's some right. there. There's some. They're like, well, we are fired. We're leaving. And then they they're like, uh, Mike, how are you gonna pay pay off Big Eddie? He's like, what? And Jack's like, I'll pay you that money. We we got a lot of money. And he's like, no, I'm not gonna borrow money from friends. Well, how about a boss? Because we're gonna hire you. He's like, oh yes. Thank you, thank you, Rick. I'm hired. Oh, I'm gonna get you a cab. Get them in a cab. And then there's Big Eddie, and Big Ed is like, oh, oh, Mike, where's the money? And then Trixie shows up, and she's like, How much money does Mike owe? And he's he's like, I owe forty grand. She's like, Okay. And she pulls out a briefcase, and it's full of money. And she takes out a forty grand, gives it to Big Ed. Big Ed's like, All right, we're square. And they get in, they get in the car, in, in the next taxi, and Mike's like, Trixie, where'd you get all that money? She's like. Oh, that was the money that Jack stole from the mob. Oh, I'm sorry. This was the thing. Jack hacked the treasury department. <laughs> right. And changed his alias to Mike Post so that Mike Post on Super Train would be killed by the mob. That was his plan. We'll, re we'll return to that momentarily. <laughs> But, so Mike says, Trixie, is there enough money in there for a honeymoon? And they make out. Oh. Then he cuts Super Train, the outside of Super Train. Mr. Rust does not look happy. And the, the head of Super Train goes, Mr. Rust, I'm sorry to say that the maiden voyage of Super Train was not without incident. He says, well, get that window fixed. I intend for us to roll in four hours. Well, you heard the man. Let's fix up Super Train. Roll credits. Super Train, everybody. Super Train. Super Train. That was the pilot. That's the pilot. Yeah, that's just that the pilot. An hour and a half TV show right. episode pilot. That's, that's, that's like the, the really series. Long, yeah. Then. Like normal pilots for shows aren't that long anymore, right? No. no I think this I think it was maybe like was an hour, wasn't it? Seventies things. Oh, I don't Say that again, Jason. Misfits of Science was an hour, right? No, Misfits of Science was an hour and a half, too. Yeah. Oh, too. I think the bigger shows, they did that because they had like the option of just making it like the TV movie of the week if they didn't want oh, the whole series. Makes but think about how, how long an hour and a half show is with commercials. Yeah, so, I'm sure it was like three hours long, yeah. Yeah, and the lot. length of it could have been one of the drivers of the cost, too. Jules and I looked it up. It was $1 million an episode, and that's a $1 million in 1978 money. I wonder yeah. if Arsa was watching with his inflation calculator. I wonder how much <laughs> that's worth now. 
Hmm. Yeah, we haven't heard from Gunnar, so is this the first episode he's not here listening? We really rely on him for this stuff. <laughs> we really rely on him, I know, yeah. I, I think the later time that we're doing is... Um, I know, is, it, it, it's hurting. And, and I was also reading that um, there was some issue with CBS is going to host the Olympics that year, and it was supposed to be in Russia, and there was an Olympic boycott because the cold. Well, yeah, yeah. And that 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 messed with CBS's profits, and so did the cost of Super Train at the same time, <laughs> and they almost went bankrupt. <laughs> that would have been amazing. So you're saying it was the Soviet Union and Super Train that <laughs> <laughs> this company? Okay, okay. So. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I have some thoughts and some uh, things I want to revisit, but like I want to put it to the group right now. Uh, by the way, how did I do? Did, was this a reasonable amount of time to recast Super Trans? Absolutely. It sure was. It sure was. I'm getting it better. Um, all right, so I'm going to leave it to the group right now. Thoughts? Don't no. everybody speak. <laughs> okay, well, first. Well, first. I mean, to me, it was, you I know, just, it was. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, go ahead. I, I put it in the inflation calculator. In the inflation calculator, one million dollars an episode means that it'd be three point six million dollars today, um, which would be half, about half of a Game of Thrones episode. Um, yeah, yeah, which is a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, John, you were saying this just reminds you of the Love Boat. I mean, it was just like I mean, and when I was reading the Wikipedia page, it was, you know, they make the same analogy. It, it, it's just like, and, and I guess, you know, I haven't seen any other episodes, but they keep saying like a lot of the cast are just guest stars. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Which doesn't make a lot of sense to me if they're um, jumping, you know, if it's a, um, it's a, a it's a nonstop train from New York to LA. I don't know how people are getting in there, but I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, the music was, um, Almost exact. It was so like chips. I kept thinking <laughs> like chips and mm -hmm. um. When it had that, it, it you know it just reminded me of television in the seventies when I was growing up and and that um you know like like somebody was always I think you mentioned before like somebody was always getting murdered but it was like chips like every episode of chips there was this huge explosion car crash. And like mm -hmm. just like all oh, those cars and this huge explosion, and then the guys on the motorcycles got to save people. And I don't know. Um, it just you know in the seventies, by watching television, you you would think murders happen all the time, and like car crash. I mean, I just I remember like always being afraid of driving, just being like you know we're so gonna get <laughs> in a car crash. You know we're gonna get a fender bender, and the car's gonna explode. <laughs> Jason, a a anything, anything on your mind? I think, the show served, I think the show served as an important lesson, and that's why no one has ever actually made a super train. Because <laughs> people are just super train is just a bullet train, isn't it? Though I mean, it's, a, it's I big. Except it's also gigantic. It's also gigantic. I, yeah. Well, no, 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 nobody has a train that big anywhere in the world. Never mind one that's. Because they would have to make special train. tracks for them, right? Yeah. yeah. Super wide tracks. Though, Jules, design wise, though, there was something that was odd to me. Even with the size of the train, in the scene, like in the party scene where they're walking, where Mike's walking mm -hmm. along the side, it seemed cramped. Like the hallways seemed cramped. Why would they be cramped? That's a good in point. I mean, it was right. That looked like a regular sized train. That was no bigger than a normal train. Well, it, get, it gets narrower at the top. It was kind of angled, so the stuff on the second floor is 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 narrower than the than the first floor. Okay. So there there is that. But I mean, a double. I'm saying a double wide train is not actually all that wide either. Sure, sure. <laughs> what does that have, like? Sixteen? I don't know. Eighteen know. feet? You it, know, it's not. It's not that. Yeah. So. Whenever they were in rooms, it seemed very spacious. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The, yeah. But the but, rooms are huge, and those those corridors were narrow. Which you know, God bless them for for not making the train bigger on the inside. I guess. <laughs> one, of the, one of the design facts that I really liked about this was that the features were big, but not too big. Like the swimming pool, it's like, mm -hmm. oh my God, there's a swimming pool on a train. But it wasn't a giant swimming pool. It was like just a small, pool. yeah, like you know it. 
it felt like you were on a super. It, I felt like I was on a super. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I found fascinating about the way this show was written, and this is very unlike Love Boat, is mm -hmm. that there were almost no other plots beside the A plot. Yeah. Where I mean, a normal television show will have an A plot, a B plot, and a C plot. Sometimes a D plot if it's a giant thing, which are different stories going on at the same time, usually interacting. And your A plot will be your major plot and everything else will go. And there's almost nothing but the A plot. There's, I mean, there's a little bit of what's going on with Mike and his boss, but that makes no sense. And is given approximately seven minutes of airtime in right. a, and a half episode. There's also this, I guess if you're going to say there's a C plot, at the very beginning of the episode, the the guy who's the head of entertainment, who's kind of this squirrely looking nerd guy, meets a really hot chick who is the granddaughter of Mr. Root. All right? And okay, uh, she's and she's into him. She's totally into him. And he can't have sex with her. He can't have sex with her. That's the rule. Um, but we don't come back to that till like the end. Yeah. That in the very beginning and the very end, you never come back to that. And that would have been a whole much larger plot in any other show. So I think one of the reasons why this show seems to move so much is we only have one plot and it keeps going. I found that interesting. Dave, in terms of the, in terms of the plot. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a big tangent here, so watch out. Um, Dan, <laughs> uh, this is Dan Curtis's take on North by Northwest. It's all the same plot elements, kind of put into a blender and and made um, less straightforward, and um, but providing a lot of the same. You know, it's got the mistaken identity. It's got the you know um, mistaken identity of somebody with a fake identity um you know it's got it's got those kinds of those kinds of twists so i think he was really thinking about that when he was writing that if i sh should be so bold as to get into the mind of dan curtis now but what i do think in terms of influences what's more interesting is i am sorry but brian de palma saw this and this is where the sequence at the end of Mission Impossible comes from. Totally, totally. This is the first time there's people on top of a high-speed train having a fight. He does exactly the same thing, starting from the baggage compartment, where there's a completely incomprehensible mistaken identity thing happening that, that, that boggles your mind, that sets it all off, and causes them to go on top of the train. It's exactly the same. Brian You're De Palma saw this and ripped this off. Re you okay? Okay, I I do see the parallels. I believe that you, re you really think De Palma took this from Super Train? I think he did. I don't think he may not have done it consciously. But <laughs> <laughs> he, he may have been like saw Super Train, forgot about it, and then in 1997 was like, I got this great idea. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think that's how what what happens. No, I, I I think he saw it. I think he knew for a while, but he was just like, nobody fucking remembers that. If anybody <laughs> saw it, they don't even remember it. I can totally rip this off. Yeah. Yeah. And and even if he's doing that, just being like, because it's a great idea. Like, it's yeah. a great action adventure idea. Uh, have a guy. On it is. Side. Yeah. Yeah. And it has been done a number of times since. I can think of, I mean, uh, speed. It's done in speed. Uh, I, I actually, I, thought, I don't know much else besides speed, but I think I've Were seen you, it a lot since the poem. Have you read uh, Pito's comment? Do you want to read Pito's comment? Uh, there? I'm really hoping you will try Zardoz soon. We'll take that under consideration, Pito. We'll take it. What is Zardoz? Is anyone <laughs> familiar with Zardoz? I barely remember. I just yeah, looked it up yeah, and I yeah, just, yeah, it looks yeah, like yeah, Burt Reynolds that's, in it. Red diaper with suspenders. That's Sean Connery, not Burt Reynolds. Is that Sean Connery? Sean Connery and Sean red Connery. diaper with suspenders. See, suspenders. <laughs> suspenders made you know, what, did I tell you, know you? What? what did I tell you about suspenders? Sean Connery should have played the role of Jack. He's good at slapping women around. Oh, oh, oh. And it's true. Did you yeah. see that interview <laughs> he did? I'm sorry, I know. 
I've seen that interview. Yeah, not fun. Uh, so, yeah, guys, Super Train. I, I think what I'll say is the elements in Super Train that don't work, they really don't work. Like, the mistaken identity plot makes no sense. The relationship of the characters and their work is in, incomprehensible. None of that works. Uh, but the things that do work are really fun. Like, Super Train itself is a lot of fun. It, the, I don't know, like, I enjoyed Super Train and not ironically. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and I was ready to be bored to tears because when Me I too. realized the whole pitch of Love, Bo uh, Love Boat on a futuristic train is still just Love Boat and Love Boat is so fucking boring. Well, Jules, when you said it's Love Boat on a train, I was really not expecting all that murder. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's what filled me with dread, actually, because we I was about halfway attempted through. Attempted murder too. There was a lot, a lot of attempted murder. Yeah, but I was about halfway through, and I kind of felt like I don't think they have anything else to do with this plot. Jesus Christ! I mean, you know what I mean? It's like there's, you know, the, the usual thing I say in these movies when I get bored and start pausing it. And I'm like, what are they going to do with me for like the second half of this thing? And then. You know, it's a crazy action sequence on top of the train with people, yeah. you know, flying through the glasses, which I did not see coming. So yeah. I was, yeah. Jules, I don't know if we're going to watch another episode of Super Train, uh, at mm -hmm. least the podcast, but I would hazard a guess they don't do something like that again. I don't think they will either. And that's why I'm not, if Super Train were like this all the way through, I would. Yeah, I mean, definitely they watch the I mean, whole show. But <laughs> I yeah, doubt I mean, it. Had, just shooting that bit had to have been so hard and so expensive to do. Right, right. And they're already hemorrhaging money on this super train left and right because this has been a gamble. A gamble with... with <laughs> uh, Dan Curtis was like, I won't be alive in five years. <laughs> you know how they came up with the script for that opening scene about it being a gamble was they just... <laughs> Copy the actual discussion the executives had from the TV. <laughs> yeah, that's just an allegory for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, far be it from me to criticize the writing of Dan Curtis. But <laughs> if I were trying to streamline this whole thing, and this is where mm -hmm. I thought it was going to go, I would have had Jack been the assassin. That's what I thought it was going to be. Like, he's angry. He doesn't want to be on this train. He's like, tri he's always yelling at Trixie and everything like that. I would have had him be a mob hitman. And he's been the one trying to kill. You didn't realize it, but Jack's been the one trying to kill Mike the whole time. That's what I would have done. I would have cut the whole mistaken identity thing. That, like, that's what it would have been. That, personally, that's how I would have simplified. Can, can I read something from, um, and I don't know if we covered this, but I, uh, I read something from the Wikipedia. It's, yeah, it's sure. got its own paragraph. It's got its own section under production troubles. <laughs> <laughs> but it starts off, Super Train was the most expensive series ever aired in the United States at the time. The, the production was beset by problems, including a model train that crashed. NBC paid $10 million dollars. For a total of three sets of model trains on different sides. the train? Holy shit. There's a full-size train with two-story cars 64 feet long, 26 feet wide, and 22 feet high. They don't even show the outside of the train that much. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a mid-sized version built at a scale of one and one uh, quarter inches to the foot, a size large enough to create realistic medium distance details and for long shots there's a baby super train at a quarter inch scale here seen at the outdoor location in LA that may eventually be the greatest train set of all acres of miniature towns and landscapes are built around <laughs> it's 3,000 foot track <laughs> <laughs> maybe a mile nearly a mile of track <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. It is, so when the series was heavily advertised during the 78-79 season, it received poor reviews and low ratings. The two-hour premiere was outrated by a two-hour special of Charlie's Angels. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> that's, that's when your show sucks. I mean, that's one of the things that, like, I think – I know Jules and I are 
relative aficionados of the television of this era. <laughs> and I, I think what surprises me about that is, listen, I know what Super Train was up against, and it's better. That doesn't mean that the elements of Super Train that are bad aren't really bad, but it's better than fucking Charlie's Angels. It is. It's better than Love Boat. It is. Like, what was on TV that was better than Super Train at this point? Of its ilk? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. It was all pretty formulaic or whatever. I mean, at least this was... Like, what was playing at this point? This was totally yeah. bizarre. I mean, so that would have been interesting. I would have thought it would be more interesting, given how uniform television was at the time. You know, there wasn't... You weren't, you know... So even if it is mostly bizarre gimmicks like an atomic-powered train, it's also bizarre in terms of the plot, in terms of you know, all this weird crap going on. Yeah. So I would think it would be more interesting, but just goes to show you why they played it safe. That's what, yeah. this is why they played it safe. Yeah, I the mean, world was not ready for, Super for Dan Train. Curtis and the Super Train. Something, something else uh, noteworthy is TV Guide in 2002 rated this number 28 of the 50 worst TV shows ever. 28? Then, then TV 28. Guide had no idea what it was doing. Yeah, they, they are not a guide to television. <laughs> no, they're not, a, no, they're not a nothing to nothing, but I mean... TV uh, Guide never watched... They any might, I don't think they're very wrong here i can see this on a uh, on a top 50 list of worst tv shows no way no and, and listen again like by modern standards absolutely but i'm i tell you like pull up a list of television shows from that era and you're going to be hard pressed to find something particularly better than super Friends. right well no, I mean, yeah, I know what you're saying, um, but yeah, no, this kind of fits in. This is for, right. If I had to watch TV in 1979, this would probably be the most entertaining thing. Um, but at the <laughs> same time, I don't know. <laughs> it's not all that great either. Sure, sure. So uh, my final thoughts are I enjoyed Super Train a lot more than I thought I was going to. Uh, I'm glad we watched it. Jules, I think you and me may watch some more Super Train on our own time. That's right. Uh, we may not do it for this podcast. But, <laughs> but emails start rolling in. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I do not forget. Maybe you. have a whole uh, Dan Curtis night. You can, like, when you watch your Dark Shadows, you can Roll. pair it with yeah. a, a episode of Super Train. Yeah, Dan. Yeah. And the guy who does the music for Dark Shadows is, it does the music for this shit, too. Dang. Oh, it's the same guy, really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. wow. Is Barnum okay. going to show up on Super Train at some point? We should find out, shouldn't we? Um, uh, Buzz is the conductor, you're going to find out. <laughs> Damn. Uh, yeah, maybe. So that's what I have to say. I like Super Train more than I thought. Jason, any last words? Um, I mean, I, I really didn't like it. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> over here in the in the camp with John. I, I respect that you guys like it, but I didn't. I wasn't thrilled. <laughs> That's fine, man. I, I understand. John? No, oh, fuck this show. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean I, you know, um, I don't know. It was like, you know, I have never heard of this, um, so I give Jules props for pulling this out of, I don't know, obscurity. But it was like, um, if, you took, uh, if you took Snowpiercer and mixed it with The Love Boat, and added the music from Chips and <laughs> gave it way too much money. <laughs> You'd have this. Um, I don't know. If I was a woman, I'd be angry because <laughs> there's not one like woman in the, <laughs> this whole two-hour episode or however long it was. That's just a normal person. It's like, duh, I'm your wife. Duh, I'm your wife duh. <laughs> I really need somebody to look after me. I have my fall mm -hmm. off the train. Mm -hmm. Duh. You know? <laughs> yeah, it, it does not serve its female characters well. Uh, Jules, final thoughts? Um, yeah, I, I, I don't. I think relative to the to to the shows of the time, we made this point. Relative to the shows of the time, this seems way more interesting and way more bizarre and in fact i think i've met I, I think i've mentioned before 
one of the things I like about doing this show is that I like the the catastrophic failures mm -hmm. of which we have far less now. Mm -hmm. um, Hollywood is way more of a well-oiled machine. Even the bad movies aren't all that bad. They're just kind of like unremarkable. Don't stick out. Um, but they're not poorly constructed. They're not um, a completely stupid idea. Um, or if they are a completely stupid idea, it's executed very well to the point at which people are like, why did you do that? Why did you bother? You know what I mean? So I miss spectacular failures, and I, I, I was very entertained by this one. I just think 1979 was a really weird period for, for art in general. Television sure. and, and movies and... You know, yeah. the, all these guys are walking around in leisure suits and shit. It was just like fucking like <laughs> ridiculous. Um, I don't know. And that's probably I, it, it just like to me, it was like this kind of like was the, the, the start of the whole, you know, woke era that we're living in now. It's because of these assholes <laughs> <laughs> and their leisure suits and, you mm -hmm. know. Well, that shit, and whatever people, whatever writers and executives in a smoke-filled room drinking brandy came up with this, chopping on cigars, right? Yeah. Right. And then there's Jack, and he's here smacking around his wife. <laughs> <laughs> and this Italian guy, he's gonna snatch her up. And, yeah. <laughs> Shove the Italian guy in a chest. Yeah. Somebody's got a saber, and we're gonna have yeah. George Hamilton will be in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So everybody, Super Train, you can watch it on YouTube. And uh, everybody, uh, it's my week. It's my week to choose. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm going to go. You're going to go with Zardoz? No, I'm not doing Zardoz, but I'm not banning Zardoz either. I'm not banning Zardoz. One of you wants to pick up the Zardoz challenge on your week, you can. So, Pito, we might do Zardoz on this show. but I'll, this I'll week, fucking do Zardoz. All right, well, well. It's your choice. But it's not, my, it's not my week. Go ahead. You're right. You got the floor. For me, I'm going to give the Sophie's Choice. And uh, and Jules was the one who picked uh, this week, last week. So I'm giving it to you. Uh -huh. uh, I, you can eat. I'm going schlock here. I'm going to go the schlock barrel. And we can either do the sci-fi action film I Come in Peace about a space cop tracking a space drug dealer in uh 1980s LA how is how wait how is come spelled in that type is it c o m e or is it, it, it's spelled in the non ejaculant way oh, all right okay. <laughs> uh, i've seen the other one so it's either i come in peace or uh highlander 2 <laughs> Highlander 2 has been part of my Sophie's Choice before. Which, uh, you know, you know, to, you know, and to, to uh, as a nod to Pito, that is, um, uh, what's his name? Sean uh, Connery. Sean Connery, yeah. Yep. So, Jules? Is Highlander 2 even interesting? That's kind of the thing. Well, um, I, know it's, it's, it's I know it's bad. As, but I, it's interesting. It, it has made folklore as a notoriously bad movie, but um, I, I don't know if it is on its own. I think they're kind of comparing it to Highlander, which is a cool right. classic and, and well-received. Right. I think compared to that, I don't think on its own, though, it would be a... Um, yeah, yeah, that's just it. I just don't think we're going to have... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go with uh, I Come in Peace. I'm All right, go. everybody. I Come in Peace. Uh, it's, a, it's an experience. I've not seen this film since I was a child. Can you and, give me uh, one minute so I yeah, can find it absolutely. and make sure it's not lost media? <laughs> right. Yes. Let's make sure we didn't hit it that end. Let's say. Let's just say. God bless the model train people, so the super train will be available for our grandchildren one day. You know what I mean? Like this will always exist. Yes. And, Is uh, Jan Hammer in it? I think so. 1990, sound about right? Yeah, yeah, it's about right. All right, cool. It's on, it's on YouTube. Oh, nice. Throw, John's throwing up a link. Pito, I'll tell you, I, Pito, right now, I will commit to Zardoz. So 
Um, I've, we got a few weeks until it's my turn. Um, but I, I'll commit right now to, to um, sorry, Dawes. Also, I've known no, to change my mind, even after yeah, I think for Yeah, yeah, people, <laughs> don't, 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 no. I'm, I'm, don't I'm not big in commitment, money there. but, uh, right. Don't put crypto there, but I, I will, um, <laughs> I will commit. I am planning to pick Zardoz. I've heard, um, I've heard a lot about it. It's always mentioned in in lists of notorious bad movies. So, mm -hmm. so I come in peace. Not the porn version, but the no. um, non-ejaculated version. Mine um, start a, a start a lady whose name was Peace. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, it's different. This is different though. This has Jan Hammer in it. Which sounds like a porn name. I mean, are you <laughs> no, no, Hammer? Jan Hammer. I believe it would be Jan Hammer. <laughs> Jan Hammer. <laughs> Jan, 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 Jan Hammer. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody, next week's on Coming Feet. Thank you for uh, joining us on this super train. Uh, soon we will be taking another run. Uh, I'm your host, Dean. Always <laughs> do, you know the cap what, do you know the captain died this week? The captain of, um, of the love boat. Oh, look how we were so timely with all of the films lately. Timely. We really 90 have that. years oh, young. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Have a good night, um, everybody. Set, Thank you. set sail for love. Thank you for another episode of A Dangerous good night. Podcast. Good night, everybody. How do good I get out?